Welcome! This video provides the suggested answer key to the Unit 6 case exercise for the IDSS Targeted Threat Messaging course. Our case exercise focused on a severe weather day in the Central Plains. Our focus area was the eastern half of Kansas, which had an enhanced to moderate risk forecast for high impact hazards of all types. So we're looking at potential for a significant severe weather event. On the 18Z surface map, you should have observed a surface low approaching north central Kansas with a warm front extending southeastward across northern and east central Kansas, separating southerly flow and warmer conditions south of the boundary from southeasterly flow and cooler conditions north of it. There's also a trough extending south of the surface flow, separating southerly surface flow from westerly flow. Also notice a surge of mid-60s dew points working northward at this time across southeastern into east central Kansas. Visible satellite imagery through 2030Z indicates very stable conditions over northeastern and far eastern Kansas, given the cloud streets, with full heating further west across east central Kansas, suggesting considerable air mass destabilization. Water vapor imagery through 21Z shows a significant upper trough rotating northeastward over Kansas, with a dry slot and upper wind maximum approaching south central Kansas. Just from these 20Z images from the SBC Mesoanalysis page, focused on instability and shear. I'm focusing on north central Kansas, where significant destabilization and sin reduction has occurred since 18Z. I also have boundaries with some convergence along them. While visible satellite doesn't show much cumulus development yet, I expect that to change during the next hour or two, and we can see hints of it at 2030Z. Note there is some elevated convection behind the surface trough that is not severe. So you were asked to complete two of the three tasks indicated. I will provide you my suggested answers for all three. Now, there is no single correct answer, except that your focus should be on the what, where, and when. In these examples, note that I am downscaling my expected storm initiation region in time and space. Here I'm showing similar information through a social media graphic focused on the what, where, and when, highlighting my confidence level as well, which is up to moderate given a cap erosion and building cumulus starting to appear. My focus area is the eastern part of north central Kansas, mainly east of Concordia and Salina. This can be done in a simple and efficient PowerPoint template in which I just fill in the information I want to communicate. There are different ways this template can be set up. So does the information presented in the past two slides look similar to yours? At 21Z, SPC issues a tornado watch for our focus area covering a seven hour period. In this part of the exercise, we want to downscale our messaging to focus on where the severe storm threat exists over the next one or two hours, and where it will not exist for at least a few hours. Here's the area I focused on in the prior slide. So you can see the part of the watch I'm focusing on in the near term. The 21Z surface map on the right shows a strengthening surface low west of Concordia, Kansas in the north central part of the state a dry line boundary to the west of Wichita, Kansas, and a warm front from the surface low extending east-southeast over east-central Kansas with back surface winds along it. Mid-60s surface dew points are spreading northward across eastern Kansas. This is confirmed on these HER analysis plots of surface temperature and dew point. With full heating, we're creating a very unstable environment across east-central and the eastern part of north-central Kansas with boundaries supporting initiation where the cap has been erased. Some mandatory levels from the SPC Mesoanalysis page at 22Z show support for increasing lift given isentropic lift at 850 millibars and lift supported by upper divergent flow in the left front quadrant of an upper jet. We also see cooling at 500 millibars, supporting greater lapse rates aloft and air mass instability across east central Kansas. How about the surface? The SBC Mesoanalysis page shows increasing moisture convergence over the eastern part of north central Kansas by 22Z, with weaker values over south central Kansas, then stronger values over Oklahoma where the cap is stronger. I remain focused on the eastern part of north central Kansas, basically areas east of Concordia and Salina. This is where SBC's Mesoanalysis page data suggests we have minimal cap, large instability, and increasing low level shear along the warm front a favorable setup for tornadic supercells with high impact hazards. This 22Z HER sounding for northeast Kansas on the cool side of the warm front shows a capped environment, although an unstable one, 
with a favorable shear profile, support of a large hail, and tornadoes if we can remove the inversion. This her sounding is north of Wichita on the warm side of the warm front, and we see a very unstable, uncapped environment, also with a favorable low-level shear profile for tornadic storms with veering winds and no indication of a weakness in the wind field aloft. All of this suggests we are primed for severe storm initiation on the western side of the tornado watch area, which is confirmed by visible satellite imagery at and after 21Z. I've highlighted my threat area in yellow, which looks good. So for the next two hour period, I would be focused on the green area on the right image, which is overlaid on the watch area on the left image. I expect initiation of scattered supercells that quickly generate very large hail and possibly damaging winds and tornadoes. We have a large watch area for the next seven hours, but my area of focus for the next two hours is the green area. Here's how I might design my social media graphic. You see my area of concern through 7 p.m. My confidence is increasing in scattered supercell storms with very large hail and damaging winds initially, with a tornado threat developing thereafter. Now what about messaging areas that have very little threat during the next three hours? but where the threat could increase thereafter. The observational data indicate fairly stable conditions over the far eastern counties of the watch, but with conditions likely becoming more favorable in the evening. Here's my social media graphic for that area, highlighting little threat until after 8 p.m. with a moderate confidence level thereafter, given greater uncertainty later in time. So here's what happened. The small circled area represents the reports that occurred in our focus area prior to about 23Z. Over time, the threat spread southward across the eastern part of South Central Kansas. Meanwhile, the reports in the eastern part of the watch area did not occur until after 1Z, so several hours after our targeted messaging. Do you see how we can not only target our messaging on where the hazard threat exists in the near term, but also target messaging on where the threat is minimal in the near term, but where the threat could increase thereafter? People do not know this from the watch information alone, right? Let's turn to the warning part of the exercise. We have an initial severe storm east of Concordia, the primary population center, which is pointed out by the black arrow. The storm is moving northward, away from Concordia, as indicated by the warning text product to the right. You'll note that due to the size of the polygon, the town of Aurora and the southeast portion of the polygon, not in immediate danger, is mentioned in the list of locations impacted. There's no mention of a second storm developing south of Concordia, highlighted by the white oval, which is quickly intensifying. Here's how I would target a message for the Concordia area, highlighting the storm that is quickly approaching from the south with large hail and potentially strong winds. The warning did not mention this storm, so I'm using targeted threat messaging to do so. I'm focused on the what, where, and when. Notice that in three sentences, I communicate what the lengthy text product essentially does not. With a northward storm motion, the towns mentioned in the eastern part of the polygon are not in danger. So should I indicate this in a targeted message? Perhaps not. It might be better to clear those areas from the polygon if no threat is expected to materialize. Here we have a developing supercell moving northward, but one should anticipate some deviation to the right as the warning person did with this polygon. I'm not focusing here on immediate action messaging as I don't see any towns in the immediate path of the storm. So I'm providing downstream messaging focused on the 20 to 30 minute lead time period when the storm is likely to threaten an enterprise in Abilene. Hard to know how much deviation could occur so I can't distinguish the threat level between the two towns at this point. My messaging is once again focused on the what, where, and when. Here we have a case example with a large polygon, the eastern one, covering multiple potential threats even though WarnGen only focuses the text on the eastern severe storm near Westmoreland. The storms west of Westmoreland are not severe, but the line of storms just west of the polygon are at this point. What areas are in immediate danger? The warning text only focuses on the Westmoreland storm, so we need further downscaled messaging regarding the threat to the western part of the polygon, which is not in the path of the Westmoreland area storm. My examples below indicate how I might word the message for partners that downscales the Westmoreland storm threat area and the threat from the approaching line of storms for the western part of the polygon. I do not yet know if this line will remain severe or not, though the environment looks favorable. Here we see the image 10 minutes later. The Westmoreland storm remains severe as it tracks northeastward. 
The approaching line of storms west of the polygon, however, has largely fallen apart. After consulting with the warning person, you might mention to core partners that the western portion of the warning is expected to be cleared soon. We can use targeted threat messaging not only to indicate an approaching or intensifying hazard, but also a weakening or a dissipated one. That's important information as well. Thank you for completing this exercise. This particular case was interesting, with high and severe weather expected. You only completed a small part of the case, but enough to illustrate how you can downscale messaging to support better actionable decisions throughout the event, from event initiation until its conclusion. Targeted threat messaging takes considerable effort, but that effort is needed to augment the more generic information from more general hazard services with more specific and timely information needed to support actionable decisions. Talk to your local office Sue if you have any questions about this case and how to apply targeted threat messaging for best results. This concludes Unit 6. Unit 7 will provide an exercise focused on flash flooding.